Okay, recording is started, and I think we will, let's see, last week, Tokala had left with the orcs, you guys were meeting at, hmm, oh, the slums, that's where we are, we're at the slums. Yep, I brought him back to the safe house. So we are at the safe house with our new friend. And everybody trusts everybody, and it's just happy, happy family already. Going great. And the next phase of the plan, I don't actually remember. Does anybody remember what you guys were thinking about doing next? Um, we were going to see what Blackout's information was. Oh, we're going to tie him up and That's beat right. him until he tells us everything he knows. Well, I dumped about half a Paizo adventure path on Tracy's head, so we'll just see how he does with it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Are we ready to begin then, guys? I yeah. believe so. Mm -hmm. Well, I have information on a few people here. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to tell you everything I know, but... Uh, I can tell you at least their names. Do you guys have that yet? We have some names. Right. So I believe you know the Shade. Uh, you've dealt with her. She did. There's the Black Sovereign. Uh, ruler of the city, of course. Uh, Crastus. Then there's... Uh, Evernethy. Uh, Min... I don't even know how to read that last name. Make it Hell more yeah. readable. <laughs> no. Mundane? Sure. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Elias Embervale. Gartone. Which I think uh, you guys have had a run-in with that guy. Grin. Rassic. Nauki. Barrick. No? <laughs> <laughs> These names are impossible. Come on now. <laughs> no. <laughs> Nauki. I think he's making them up Erecta. as he goes. Uh, and then. <laughs> These clearly aren't real names. Yeah, so. I didn't give him any of this, you guys. I'm sorry. He's just making it all up. Osmond Zido. Uh, okay. So those are the. I'll, I'll post it. You guys tell me how to spell it. <laughs> <laughs> See, it might be easier if you just write it down for us. <laughs> yeah, Croc's just doing sense motive to figure out like how he's stumbling over his words so, so much if he's telling the truth or not. These names are just hard, okay? <laughs> now, key Barekna. Terrible. Uh... Anywho. I'll show you the other one that I was looking at. <laughs> Abernathy Mendaini. That one is weird. Mind Mindaini. See? All right. So those are the names I have. <clears throat> uh, I know a bit about Abernathy. I know a bit about Gar, a bit more about Gartone. Uh, Have you heard and, of Crastus? Yeah, Crastus. I know very little about Crastus. He's a bit more tight-lipped than some of them. He went to the, the trash heap. That's all I know. Uh, dropped off some items there, I believe. Isn't that right, Ulfred? Is that what they told us? He's the one that came through with like a, a bunch of machinery that they stripped down. A trash heap? The pile of wonders, that is. <laughs> I was waiting for that. Oh, right, right. Yeah. Pile of wonders. Well, I, I have a general idea about Abernathy, Garton, and uh, Elias. Uh, and... There's one here that's uh, one name that she's not so bad. She's uh, more of a neutral type, not quite as evil as her uh, compatriots. Uh, 
Nalki Berekna? <laughs> Sorry, still struggling <laughs> with that name. Uh, <laughs> she's uh she's a bit more neutral. She's uh more about solving crimes than she is about uh power and all those sorts of things. Hmm. She's all in order. Yeah. So I mean, I like her. It's possible that she'd be more more uh, apt to be on our side if we could show her that that we uh, we represent something good for the city, but maybe save her for last. Save her for last? Maybe she should be our yeah. first inquiry. Possibly. I mean, there's a rumor uh, going around that she has some uh, dirt on the other captains. And that's why uh, they kind of leave her alone, even though she's not quite as nasty as the rest of them. Dirt's good. Mm. Dirt's helpful. Compromat. Um, the one I, I suggest we steer clear of for now is uh, Elias Embervale. Uh, nasty character. He's uh, feared by both the Technic League and the Barbarian Tribes. And he's the oldest captain out there. Which means he's seen some shit. Is he in particular very more cruel than the others? No, but he has survived a lot of encounters. Understood, okay. He's uh, hard to kill. Uh, Gartone, he's possibly our best bet. He's... You know, an alchemist. Uh, I heard your last run-in with him didn't go so well, so I thought maybe you'd like to start with him. I thought Tracy. we could get an alchemist. Tracy, no, he... in one more. A crowd in. Cartone, the alchemist killed you, no, Kev. Yeah, but you oh, guys we... finished him off, right? Yeah. I think Luna no. cut his head off. Did he? I thought she did. I thought she did. I know we cleaned up the alleyway. Was it because we killed the alchemist? You might be right. We I mean, he, so he got that. I can't remember. He got that sending message off, but I, I thought Luna just chopped his head clean off. Hmm. Have you seen them black out since X amount of days ago when we, when we think we killed them? I mean, it's not like I hang out with these guys every day. You can roll a knowledge local on that blackout. There was a well-known alchemist killed recently. It's believed to be connected to the killing of the Shade. And from what you know, the guy they killed was a real freak in Killbox named Doc Hellbroth, apparently operating underneath the Red Reaver Tavern. And he was a drug supplier for all over town, but also the palace. Right, okay. He was not a technically captain, but he worked for. He uh, wanted probably sold a significant amount of his stuff to Garton. Gotcha. So he was just Garton's underling. Um, oh. Well, they don't like being called that, but yeah, essentially. He was pretty tough on his own. No. Yeah, uh, that's the only alchemist we've had trouble with so far. So. I mean, I'm down to go for Garton if if you have good knowledge on where to find them. Like out. I mean, yeah. it's either it's either him or uh, Nauki, because uh, like I said, she's she knows things, but she is uh, pretty well informed. She might see us coming. I uh, I think we should go after the alchemist because I agree. of um. Uh, the whole point in taking out the one we did was to stop the drug production, specifically that one. Well, it may be that they just start up again with somebody else. We should start with him. That makes sense. I agree. Plus, even though she may be a more friendly technically, Nauki is still technically. I'm not so sure I'm ready to make alliances yet. 
I'm just going to put this out there, too. Uh, Gartone is kind of directly connected to the Black Sovereign. So Gartone goes missing. It's going to draw some heat. Well, any, all of them are going to uh, draw some heat one yeah, way or another. Sure, but the barbarians are going to be more riled up about Gartom. Now that they're suffering from uh, uh, withdrawal from the drugs, they'll be too busy dealing with that. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> like how you think. Yeah. <laughs> and then maybe by the time they snap out of it, they'll realize exactly how screwed up everything is and be more on our side. I mean, do you think they're that smart? No. Uh, we may have something a little on the inside on that that could help. I mean, surely if the Black Sovereign was once such a great man, couldn't be an idiot. Take All the right. Drugs out of him. Got tone it is. Uh, and then uh, Blackout. Do we have a map? I'm sure we have a map, right? Oh, we have all kinds of maps. We're great. We're map makers. Yeah. So uh, Blackout is gonna mark uh, some of his, uh, some of Garton's labs that he knows about on the map. He can roll knowledge local on that. You don't know where any are, but there's people you could ask. You could go and inquire. Yeah. You would want to be careful about how you did so because what little you know about Doc Helbroth and having his place, not only Doc Helbroth killed, but the facility annihilated because that's how these guys roll, is it was apparently one of the main places, if not the main place in the entire city that made a very specific drug that is very appreciated in the palace. They may not have anywhere else that supplies that particular drug to that extent. And do we know if that was specifically for the Black Sovereign or for him and his troops? We don't know that, right? Um, okay, let's see. Where's Luna? Luna, you might know. Ooh, you've got a two knowledge local. Natural one. Luna's, I don't know. Fuck. Can't remember. Do you want me to try, since I've been kind of sniffing around for days? You could try. Probably higher DC, but, you know, it's, it's, a, it's another try, at least. <laughs> Knowledge local. There we go! Let's see, and you want to inquire along what lines exactly? Um, where we can find these labs? Okay. Uh, Nomcath, with your natural 20 knowledge local, you will put together some sort of general sense from things Mockery said and Doc Helbroth's lab and general Killbox culture that the drug that Doc Helbroth sold, in fact, you may have all well even overheard some rumors while you guys were bumming around at the slot bag. The drug that Doc Helbroth sold was not allowed to be. It was prohibited for the public. He only made it and sold it directly to the palace, and no one else was allowed to have any of that supply. As far as outside the palace, Tokala might have the only sample of that drug in the city had the only sample yeah i think he ate it he, all. he had two he had he two. only oh. one <laughs> he has one i think takala has the last non-palace stored supply of that particular drug the strange orange paste that glows uh, i've not heard of anybody else Having that drug around, we literally may have been just the one production facility. Uh, at least for now. Drugs isn't all that he produces, though. He uh, he does explosives too. 
Oh. Hence the oh. Uh, horrific burns all over his body. Yeah. Hey, hey there, Rai. Hey. Hey, Rai. Hey. I just rolled a natural one knowledge check for you. You're welcome. That's lovely. Yeah, you didn't know anything. Luna didn't. Well, after out... watching something on... Oh, sorry, guys. Go ahead. After watching something after I sent that message because I got a... I had a notification on... from another Discord server about something. I had to go look at it, and now I'm too hyped to even lay back down. <laughs> okay. Well... Just Do I just better. listen in, or are you feeling actually feeling up to playing? Well, I'm gonna see how long I can I can I can I can play for a little bit. Well, okay. if you right. you don't have to say bye or pause or anything, if you drift off, I'll roll a gigantic two-handed sword attack for you on the nearest target, no matter who it is. Probably correct though. Yeah. Okay, so Nomcath, you come up with that theory about the drugs based on putting together all this different information and other things you've overheard in the city. Uh, if it's that important, he's probably going to set up another facility somewhere else, but that'll take a lot of time. Uh, do you know of anywhere else he might be working out of? I mean, he said he makes explosives, so... He's got to have other facilities, right? Uh, according to the DM, I was unsure. But I know somebody who might, uh, might have information on him. It's the only living person I know of who still has contact with the guy. Hearsick? Oh. That asshole? <laughs> oh, you know him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We've got to have some words with him. That's just why we're getting fucked up by some really baddies. Wow. Would I know where to find Hearsick in this town? Yeah, you could post a message for him at sort of a mercenary guild in the inner sector. You could get a message to him. How do you know him? I mean, you know, my type, we kind of run in the same circles. This doesn't make me feel good. I mean... <laughs> What, what's your relation to him? You run in the same circle as you. What does that mean? We work for the captains. We do shit. You know. Do you trust him? <laughs> no. What am I stupid? Did you guys? I didn't. But the rest Barely. Of them, yeah. But, you know, for money. We can get him to talk. Why Maybe. not just, uh... I think we don't need to give him money. Let's just. Yeah. We owe him one. Mm. Well, no, I think he owes us a little something. Oh, yeah, I meant like we owe him some pain. Well, he can avoid the pain if he just fes gives us the information we need. We'll call it even after that. Sure. All right. Uh, all right. I'm going to go post the message. You guys try not to. Uh set any city blocks on fire. We haven't yet. So, how do you want to address this man? Normally, the only reason you would ever contact him would be to pass off a job to him or give a job to him that, that you don't want to take, you know, something like that. Yeah. Or, or recruit him for a job that you think you need more than one person for. Yeah, um, he was going to post a note about, uh, Hearsick, have a, uh, job that requires more than two hands, uh, sit, come see me at, you know, X address. Okay. Uh, <laughs> at the slot bag. At the slot bag. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Because why not? <laughs> do you set? Do you want to like leave a message here at the Mercenaries Guild? 
which is over uh, on the east side of the Street of Lights, but you can get over there no problem. You would go over there and leave a message, and you come back in a day or so two to see if he replied, or you could propose a meeting, but you have no way of knowing if he's even in town or out on a on a job himself. He's a long, long distance bounty hunter, from what you understand. Like, a, someone has run all the way to Chesed or Torch or Yadenre or something, and it's going to take two months to go get him and cost a fortune to the bounty hunter. That's the sort of job Hearsick does. Would my patron have the ability to contact him? Yeah. Would it be okay for me to go and uh, make that request of my patron? Sure. I was okay. Gonna say, I was going to say if you if you can have have him meet us at the slot bag, the the requirement to announce his presence is to order the double death bomb. <laughs> I recommend it. <laughs> I mean, who would ever be so foolish as to order the double death bomb? Twice. Yeah, I guess I'll uh, approach my patron with this. Okay, you have a super secret mode of contact with her that will take you the rest of the day. Uh, because you have to go to a place and use a very secretive form of communication... She's got to respond, and then we'll we'll get you back with that answer in a bit. Is there anything else the group wants to do, or do we want to fast forward for that segment? Uh, uh, do we have any supposed locations on that, Numcath? I'm sorry. On what? On on his labs, anything of like no, that? I, I, I... No. No. I've gotten bits and pieces here and there, but to really get a feel for this place would take weeks, if not months, I mean, for a whole city on one person. When he's gone, Cassandra Lee pokes out of your backpack. Uh, I was going to mention something I wanted to do. Yeah? Too, actually. What's um, that? Just with Cassandra Lee, actually, I was hoping to the... It can be after she pops out or whatever, but... Sure. Just free time in the VR... <laughs> okay. World. Sure. Um, this is very like, you know, I don't have to actually RP it or whatever, but that's what she would do. Just hook up to the VR and chill out, hang out with Kasafin, take Kasafins. Sure. You, she can actually converse with the whole party and you while you're running around in the Kasafin desert. Oh, nice. Yeah, and then Croc does just come with us with a helmet on her. You know, <laughs> simulated friends. Yeah, she's just knocked out with a VR helmet on while you guys talk. Finally, some peace and quiet. Wow. Yeah, she's logged into World of Warcrock. <laughs> <laughs> well, wow. I don't know. He, he, he's, sim he's, kind of, he's not very war he's not very warlike, so more like World of uh, uh, Peace Croc. <laughs> world of Plant Craft. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There we go. So. Judgment Craft. <laughs> well, <laughs> Cassandra Lee can actually create sort of a comm channel between you and Crocta. So you can all discuss while Crocta, you notice that discussing anything with Crocta in this state, she's much more relaxed. A little more optimistic, maybe. A little more comfortable. A little less genocidal. Well. And don't go too far. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about that. It's a project of months. <laughs> But it does seem to have an effect. It's a, it's a pretty good simulation. You've tweaked it a few times and described this, and this this should feel more this way and that way, and uh, Cassandra Lee's been able to adjust it to your specifications, and now it looks, sounds, feels, smells very, very much like being on Kassa. Nice. Yeah, and I'm also going to, like, slowly... I mean, slowly, but I would ask Cassandra Lee if there's, like, any way I could just, like, never take this off and mm. still get around she says, i don't expect her to have an answer right now yeah she says if i ever found another one of the devices that houses me it is sophisticated enough to house your mind your body would die of course without your mind but your mind would exist mm. in here and you could just be in the simulation full time if you wished mm. oh no i meant more so like like could you make you know, Nomcat look like a Kassoth when I look at him somehow. 
Oh, well, if you had some AR goggles, augmented reality goggles, you could wear those. And yeah, as long as I'm nearby, they could always make everyone look however you want. That's a little oh my God. that may That'd not be so be, great. That's actually recommended against by your therapy program that I've been running, but um, uh, Kasathen. I, I don't know if you have like the right therapy program for me. Oh, yeah. I see. Okay. But yeah, that'd be awesome. I'll have to find some of those goggles. Like you're telling me I could make the whole yeah. world around me look like Kasathen. She says, yeah, it's, it says very specifically right here, this can cause the user to permanently dissociate from reality. Sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> Much as I hate to admit it, Crocodile. Actually, I don't hate to admit it. I kind of like you, even though you're weird and disruptive. You're, you're cool. But we kind of need you at this juncture. So well, please fun. don't please don't dissolve into a false reality. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I'd still be able to interact. I just, you know, you'd look... Like a Kasathan, it'd be a little, a little nicer. Yeah, that sounds like there's potential of you going completely off the rails. I don't, don't think that's a good idea. There's yeah. an attack spell in Rollmaster called Private World, and you cast <laughs> it at a person, and they make a will save, and if they fail, they're fucking in it forever, and it's whatever the caster says it is. Oh, it is, no. Uh, it is save awesome. or lose, but it literally puts you in a matrix forever. Oh, no. Nice. Well, I appreciate your voice of uh, support for me or whatever over of course we've always got along yeah. yeah i guess yeah numcath yes while blackout is doing his thing do you th how long do you think we wait until we approach what's his name again mockery he said a couple of days. He's couple of days. Everything's kind of messed up, and he's kind of pissed at us. I mean, <laughs> honestly, I wouldn't, if, except for this meeting with Blackout before, I wouldn't have even tried to meet with him at least until tomorrow morning, under okay. normal circumstances. Okay. Well, I hate to waste time. There's got to be something we can use you and Croctaw to scout around here and use your sneaky skills to find out some more information. It's not that hard to do. I, I practically grew up doing it. It's just it takes time. Yeah, I know, but we've got a little time. Let's let's utilize that time. That's what I'm saying. Okay. So what can we put your sneaky skills and Crocodile's sneaky skills? How can we put that to work for our best good? Uh, Cassandra Lee uh, asks, do you have another helmet? Um... Uh, yeah, I mean, I got the. Let me double check it. Do they do they bring both of them? I think I put one. Well, I think I left one behind. One moment. Let me uh, check Olfred's backpack. So I'll manage. manage yeah, Pack there. Dwarf. What do you got there, buddy? What are you looking for? A VR helmet. No, I got two. Uh, oh, you I got two. Two just in case. Always on top of it, not Kath. Always on top. Cassandra Lee says. Nods at Nomcath and says, put it on for a moment, and she connects her other cable to it. Uh, and it looks uh, like Nomcath took the ones I had. All right, know. sure. I'll, I'll put it on. Okay. You are brought into a world that actually just looks like this building, seen from several hundred feet in the air. You're looking down on the city from above, and at first it is subtle, but you hear sort of you hear strange whispers that are unintelligible at first and then you realize you are hearing hundreds of voices whisper at once and the challenge is not to understand what they're saying but to single out any one voice and make sense of it and it for a moment, Namketh feels like ripping the helmet off because it's just 500 conversations happening in his head at once. It's overwhelming. He's never experienced anything like it. If he ever felt sort of like social anxiety in a huge crowd or anything like that, it's that multiplied by a lot. But with your 38 knowledge local and this spell Cassandalee has tapped you into hundreds of conversations around the city that she's picked up little snippets of 
and this gives you a total of 42 knowledge local. Jesus. Damn. So, ask your questions of the whispers. Uh, what are known activities or uh, projects of the uh, captains of Uh, the technically sorry my brain the technically kept sure well yeah. like i said good you're role-playing listening to 500 people at once um you hear a name sila is still missing a technically captain named sila has been missing for several months she was last known to be leading an expedition somewhere nearby I'm gonna bounce. See you, Ray. I hope you feel yeah, better. Right. Yeah, I feel better, buddy. Yeah, later. I just had to make an emergency run to the bathroom. Uh, okay, well soon. Yeah, I hope so too. It's, and I hope that my brain goes away. Hmm. It's because these has caught my my brain is caused because of my allergies. Yeah. 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 That's brutal. Yeah. I hope you guys have fun have, and don't get yourself killed. We'll be careful. No Thanks. You too. Okay. So you get that Sila, technically Captain Sila, is missing and has been for a while. You hear whispers focus, about it and rumors. Can I focus more on that and get and, and, uh, even more, uh, a little more information on what the expedition was? Like where, what it might have been about? Sila is a specialist in robots, in mm -hmm. gearsmen, and she disappeared. Or she went on that. She was sent on this expedition shortly after Osman came back from one where they thought he was gone. Apparently, Osman was on an expedition for several months, disappeared, presumed dead, and he came back so much more powerful, better equipped and improved that he took over the Technic League. You hear whispers mm -hmm. to this effect. And you hear that when he came back, Silas went on this expedition and she has now disappeared too. But no idea where, what direction, anything like that? Mm -mm. The whispers in this neighborhood do not know. Okay. Oh, I did get a piece of information that Sila has been missing uh, she, she's a, a, a robot expert and she's been on an expedition to somewhere s nearby I, I couldn't get anything more out of this but uh, she left basically right after Osmond came back maybe gone to the same place that he went what's, this, what's the significance tried, tried... of following him he went on an expedition and then returned back a lot more powerful. So maybe she's chasing that same strength. Okay, powerful in what way? Just more magical power or what? Apparently he took over the Technic League when he came back. That's how much powerful. Holy shit, okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, I'm, I'm getting like... Uh, 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 imagine being in a big crowded room and just trying to pick up uh, pieces of conversation as you're walking through. It, it, it's kind of what I'm going through right here. It's uh, Cassandra is helping, but it's just it, it's, it's a lot of information, and, and I'm trying to piece it all together. And I, I'm only getting bits and pieces. Okay. Um, can you gather information on the the two Technic Leagues Black? leaders that Blackout was talking about, the friendly one and then the badass alchemist one? I, I can try. Give me a minute. Okay. And I will dive back in. <clears throat> can uh, Crocta switch over to this program too if she wanted? Sure. 
she pulls you out of the fake Kasath and puts you directly into oh shit hang on let's see oh that's not working one moment we haven't been here in a while gotta fix a thing or two okay PCs boom You are brought into Cassandra Lee's memory of the brain in a jar. Hmm. And in yeah. this area, you are sort of treated to some memories of Theris Halyard when he was alive. Let's see. I need a journal entry for you. Theris memories. There we go. And then that. And you guys will, Cassandra Lee will sort of quick play through some past history of Gartone and what the brain in a jar knows about Gartone, which is quite a bit. Let me make sure this is all stuff Theris would know. Poof, poof, poof. Wouldn't know that because Theris was turned into a brain in a jar before that happened. Okay. The party now has access to this information by digging through. It's rather unpleasant. The brain in a jar, as you remember, is a deeply unpleasant person, and his memories are fairly similarly unpleasant. You can see that he was kind of an asshole to everyone he ever met. And Gartone is a, was, and still is, a very talented alchemist, but he has horrible burns over half of his body. Uh, he supposedly has several labs in town where he performs dangerous experiments involving drugs and explosives. Gartone is liaison to the Black Sovereign, has the most contact with him of all the Technic League captains. And Gartone's associates the party might know are Theris Holyard, the brain in a jar. AWOL for five months. Rumor is Theris led a doomed... Actually, Blackout can verify this when he gets back. Rumor is Theris led a doomed expedition to the Scar of the Spider, and Hearsick came back with most of the team's badges for a bounty. Sanville Tret was an operative of Gartone. He was executed in Torch while on a recon mission there. He was he was the spy. Ilaris Zaleshi, you guys know her as Soup Bitch, has been missing for months now after a mission to the south. Hell yeah. Paldris Gray has been AWOL for years, but was Gartone's right-hand man for a time. He apparently stole a valuable orphan with incredible arcane abilities. He's presumed dead or left Numeria entirely. And then, of course, Hearsick. Frequently employed by him for information, kidnappings, or killings. And that's what you find in the brain in a jar memories. I didn't realize, sorry. So the thing that Nomcath was doing like above the city was the memories? But that was something Yeah, else. it was, it was Cassand basically uh, Cassandra Lee being an AI recorded all the conversations she overheard throughout the entire time we've wandered around through here. Uh, okay. So we're literally, we're literally uh, shuffling through the shuffling through that. I see. It is her version, the computer version of whispering lore, which is a spell that Croctaw probably would know about. It's a druid spell. Hmm. Whis druids normally do this in natural environments. You would hear the whispers of the earth or trees or animals. You know, it's part of how you. I think you might have used it once in Scar of the Spider. I remember. But he's commune with nature. I commune think. with nature is, is better, more direct conversation. Whispering lore is when you really grasp and it's straws. But Cassandra Lee is able to do it with sentient conversation in a certain radius. And it's really a needle in a haystack kind of thing. She can dump this information on you and it's up to you to make sense of it. But with Nomcat's natural 20 knowledge local, I figured I'd give you a little tidbit. Okay. And that was one thing. She was just looking at the neighborhood, showing Nomcat the area where she'd extracted these whispers. 
And then this is digging into her copies of Theris Holyard's fucked up brain. Whenever she connected to him, she saved anything she thought might be pertinent from his memories regarding the Technic League Starfall and his recent history. Uh, Garton is already, uh, probably have it out, has it out for us, considering that we've messed with him now three times. Yeah. It sounds like he would know you guys by now. And That's some of you, if you think about it, could guess who the AWOL right-hand man who abducted a orphan with arcane abilities might be. Uh, Honor? Know, as a character, yeah, right? You guys can put that together with uh, with Theris's memory. Theris even met Connor because Santa Lee can pull up a memory of Theris's and you see oh. a much younger Connor Bane. Under the name Paul yeah, Gray. He, he, he's, Holy shit. He, he's, uh, he's, uh, uh, what's her name? Val. Val, yeah. Gartone was going to use Val for some kind of arcane battery because she was, at the time, 11 or 12 years old and talented in the arcane arts. She was going to be a sorcerer or a scion, magus, whichever. And uh, Connor, rather than let her be used as a guinea pig spell battery he abducted and took her to torch i assume the silence is because all your minds are blown yes okay good i'm starting to figure out who it was <laughs> okay Done with brain in a jar for now, or? Yeah. Okay. Well, you guys spend some time sifting through information that she saved. After a time, Blackout comes back, and you asked her to contact Hirsik, correct? Yes. She said, is this directly pertinent to your mission? He, of course. Yeah. On mission. Always. You hear the static of you being muted on the communicator you're talking to her with. And she comes back 30 seconds later and says I've asked to hire him when he returns to Starfall and he thinks four or five days knowing him that probably means two or three and then he's going to scope out from a number of different angles what's going on before he says yes but he right. should contact me in a few days roger that she says how's it going they didn't attack me on site that is surprising they seem rather destructive. But that's what we need. Yes, but how much destruction is the right amount? If they burn the whole city to the ground, what's the point? Understood. I'll keep them roped in. I understand the group is split into two factions, one of which is still extremely loud and dashing around outside the city. The other is missing. I'm with the missing faction. The loud one, I have no handle on. She says, I can buy you and them very little time, but I will try. But you have to keep them off the radar. We'll be uh, silent. Okay, good luck. And Blackout, you return to the party. Uh, good news, bad news, guys. Uh-oh. Okay. Good news. Uh, Hearsick will be back in town in uh, a few days. Uh, bad news is that uh, it's, yeah, it's going to be a few days. Which means we're sitting ducks until then. 
How have you had nothing? We should probably lay low until then, anyways. Uh, we've got another safe house we can go to that's further away from things. We didn't want to take you the, there the first time. Do we have to stay in this shithole every time we're waiting? I mean, it's, <laughs> honestly, it's not very pleasant. What, the shithole the other shithole? No, I mean the whole city. Like, I feel like it's killing us all every moment that we're here. You see how the plants are, right? Everything's dying. I mean, look my at my robes. Is... They're pristine. I'm doing great. My thing is, the more often we try, we cross that wall, the more often we get, more often, more chances we are to get spotted. Staying inside, yeah. staying in the, staying in the slums in here, we can hide. Well... Yeah, I get that, but uh, I mean, the uh, when we go into that other world, I think it's is it Wilburn you cast it, and we slip into another dimension. You call it uh, right? teleport? You mean the rope trick? Yeah, that thing. When we do that, do you think? Uh, I mean, it certainly feels cleaner. Maybe we would be protected from all this disgusting horribleness of the city. Inside a rope trick. Uh, rope trick, I don't think, defends us against scrying, correct, Toby? It removes you from the plane, so it does, in fact, make it very difficult to detect you. Yeah, that is, I mean, you guys don't have to. Uh, I mean, how long does the rope trick last? All night. Like eight hours, isn't it? I think so. I mean, I was just, I don't know if I'm just sitting around here, might as well. Do it on a beach. How many charges we got left on the wand? Uh, I have to look, Toby. 19, 20 ish, maybe? 16. 16. Okay, I was close. Yeah, so... uh, I didn't realize it's a wand. Okay. Yeah, it's a mm -hmm. wand. I thought he just did it. No, no, it, it's a wand. Mm. I mean, we could. We got enough charges for four days. Ah, uh, no, it's okay. I'll just try to transform into... I don't know. I'll figure it out. I mean, if that's a viable option, we can... I mean, you can wind walk us, Croctaw, and or... I've got passed through walls. We can get through the wall, no problem, I think, without being, you know, completely exposed. That's what I was thinking, too, but Mom, Kathy, you said you were worried about them detecting us coming in and out. It's my nature. Uh, the way the way I, I, I'm trained and the way I think of these things, uh, I admit I think more physically. Going through the wind walk, yeah, it would be less likely. Uh, I would really highly recommend we cross the southern wall, probably somewhere's more eastish, just to be really really way of ways from where everybody where everything is and where all the heavy detection is. But, I mean, yeah, the more that I think about it, we could, if we do the wind walk, get out of there that way and just come back in a few days. I mean, hell, we could go to Torch for a few days, right? Yeah, I mean... Potentially. It depends. If I'm just thinking, like, if you guys have more scouting and stuff you want to do while waiting, that's, that's fine. At least you're doing something. But if we're just literally sitting here getting killed by this toxic city... <laughs> While we wait for hearsay, kind of doesn't make any sense to me. Okay, the only thing I see with this problem, uh, Cassandra Lee, how much of those flying hunter killers are she still patrolling? She is hidden since before Blackout yeah. came back, she disappeared. Okay. Yeah, remember, uh, I'm, keep, I'm keeping her hidden. Sorry. Or... Way to way to go, Oberyn. Fuck. <laughs> Who? No, I'm kidding. I'm the kidding. drow gives up the secret. <laughs> Damn it. Blackout, you will forget you heard that sentence. Yeah, I'm yeah, you didn't hear that. Player to back game. <laughs> I'm striking this from the record. Strike that from the record. <laughs> the jury will forget that they saw the defendant drop his pants and take a shit on the table. <laughs> so. I will. I will sign to Blackout. Do you understand understand sign language? He uh, he looks at me and he says, uh, "You guys keep doing that. What what is that?" <laughs> 
sense I tell, motive. I was going to say, I, I signed to Numcat sense motive on that shit. And I... I <laughs> I see it, I would do it too. Uh, sorry, I was dealing with a box. Croctaw, you're pretty confident that Blackout does not understand drow sign language. Yeah. I'm catching okay, the I'll... same conclusion, but Croctaw is staring into the depths of his soul somehow through the helmet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll sign. Uh, don't worry, he's an idiot. He doesn't know. <laughs> You guys are just gonna keep doing that. Somebody gonna talk I, to me. I do it cool too. Like I use both sets of hands. Like I start oh, on the top oh hand God. and then I finish with the bottom set. That's overwhelming. <laughs> you can't. It's like she's speed talking at you. <laughs> uh, it's just it, it's just some hand sign stuff we came up with along the way. You know, we've been traveling together for a while. All right. I mean, I guess you gotta make do when you don't have radios. Yeah, uh, it started. It started all the way back in Scrap Hall. You know, long before we had the radios. Plus, it's a lot more quiet than the radios too. There you go, Blackout. Now you know they're from Scrap Hall. <laughs> Logging that one. <laughs> <laughs> We've also mentioned about going back to Torch. So yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're from all, right. all these places full of rebels. I do sign to Nomcat though. Before we do any sneaking around, I think it's good that we consult Cassandali to see where those flying killer robots are patrolling or not. And Nomcat just kind of nods. All right. Uh, Dark Dog signs that she feels like she could do something to them if we had to. I mean, I I could control the winds, knock them down. <laughs> Although that might give us away. <laughs> She's You're just looking for excuse to drop a hurricane. He's really confident about just this. Just a current, just a current <laughs> in the upper atmosphere. No. That's what she promises, but you know she wasn't expecting that that high pressure in the center, and it just kind of got out of hand. <laughs> yeah, true, true. It always starts that way. So uh, we getting out of the city for uh, the next few days here. I mean. There's always more scouting I can do, but yeah, it just maybe it's better overall. Blackout, you can roll not... knowledge local on that. I'm gonna have to do it from the character sheet. That's frustrating. What's wrong? No, no, no. Just the little bars at the bottom, trying to scroll over them, and then the whole thing just keeps closing on me. Damn it! You, Blankout thinks that Gartone will be the toughest to get to of all the TL captains because of his proximity to Black Sovereign. He's always behind a hundred or so terrifyingly effective barbarian guards. The other TL captains like the shade. They go out in the city. They have their own enterprises. They don't hang out at the palace that much. They are much more ex accessible. So even if you do get this information from Hirsik, it's probably going to amount to this guy is protected by a small army, and he's tough to reach. Some of the others could be easier. Like, some of the others you see just in passing sometimes when you visit the technically call to pick up a job or look for a job. Yeah, uh, Black is going to make one suggestion here. It's, uh, there is one of them that's I think probably the easiest to make disappear without raising too much of a stink. It's, uh, Avernethy. That weirdo likes to hang out with his robots all the time. Hates coming out amongst the people. You know, real creep. I don't even think the other captains would care if we got rid of the guy. Other than he's, you know, extraordinarily useful. And he hangs out with robots? Yeah. Croc does in. Uh, yeah, stupid. Alright, let's do it. I've been I, I, itching to genocide some robots for months now. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a good use of our time. Or what's that TL captain's name? The the one that's more neutral. Uh, the name Nakabari. 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 Nakab
the uh, ranger. Nay Nay. Mm. Her friends call her Nay Nay. Do they? Uh, nay Nay. Yeah, <laughs> Nay Nay. Do they though? <laughs> Don't for Nay Nay. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah, I think that's worthy, especially if we can build some uncertainty in the, the TO Captain's League by, you know, maybe assassinate a couple of them, making them all kind of freaked out a little bit. It might be a little bit kind of productive, because maybe they'll they'll step up their guard patterns, but, but you know. The thing, the thing is, maybe in the meantime we can dig up some more information where the Sila went, and, you know, we rile them up, then we can disappear for a few days or a week or two tracking down this Sila, you know, let them think everything's fine, and then come back and rile them up again. Yeah, and if we... This Abernathy, he's the crazy robot dude? A Abernathy, yeah. A a Abercocky, okay. So, uh, maybe we learn how to control some tech off of him, and maybe we can... I know, Croctaw, you're going to hate this, but maybe we can use it for our good to uh, create more insanity for the TL. Uh, I mean, just a thought. A, just a thought. There's, a, there's some possibilities that direction. As he kind of pats the, the backpack that Cassandra Lee's in, reminding mm -hmm. people of how she said she could take over robots. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, take over them and use them? Is that what you said? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So dumb. Not a good idea, Oliver. A lot of furious hand signaling going back and forth, Blackout. Yeah. Well, we're, not, we're not doing any hand signaling. I, I, that was out in the open. I just patted the backpack in a uh, in a reminding way of who else is here and, and reminding them of what uh, of what she said she could do recently. Yeah. Actually, I take it back. Yeah, it's okay. I thought about it for a second. I guess it's no different than me manipulating rock and throwing it at people. I mean... It, it... In the long run, we destroy more tech and destroy our enemies, Croctaw. So it's kind of a win-win for you, buddy. Yeah, yeah. We'll be turning him. I doubt we'll find anything powerful enough to actually like take over the whole city, but we can use them to weaken their other forces while they get destroyed. So those are my two ideas. Thoughts? Yeah, let's go after Albuquerque. Is uh, Abernathy's uh, home like known, well-known? No, but it is one of those things you think you could possibly dig up with some investigatory journalism. Right. Because I do have a general idea of where his house is. He most likely lives in Sovereign Watch. He's got money. He probably has security. He probably lives up there. And it would be a secret, but a secret that could be discovered. These guys seem like they have some methods of extracting secrets themselves. They seem to have learned a little bit about Garton from, from you and from their own past experience. And yeah, that could be investigated. So scouting mission to try to find this guy's location? Uh, works for me. I mean, gets us away from the area where they're going to be doing the most looking anyways. Okay, we all going? Are we sending a stealth crew? What's our what's our plan? Um, I don't like the idea of all of us going on a stealth, uh, uh, um, just a recon. I'd like uh, to keep low profile as well. Yeah. Um, I will park... Since Rai's not feeling good, I'll park Luna here at the safe house. Yeah. Give you one less noisy person to worry about. She's uh, pretty good at blending in, but um, she's not particularly sneaky. But I'd say she's probably less likely to blend in in the, in the richer side of town. <laughs> sort of, so, yeah. yeah. So Blackout, do you have kind of free reign throughout the city? Or other places where you're not allowed to be would be suspicious for you to be seen in. DM, is there somewhere I shouldn't be seen? You could not enter the palace. You 
could not enter the Technic League unless you were specifically summoned by one of the captains, the, the main compound here. You've been there once or twice where they were like, we have a job for you. Come by here. And when you got there, they gave you a bunch of information. They, you know. So that has happened in the past, but normally you don't go there. So the inner sector is off limits to anybody that doesn't have a real good reason to be there. Now, Sovereign's Watch is a wealthier neighborhood. Killbox, obviously, utter chaos, anarchy. Gritforge has security, regular guard patrols. The police are never, you know, the city guards never more than a couple blocks away. Blowing a whistle or making a noise or whatever will bring them. And that's where a lot of your business takes place. A lot of residential people that have a little bit more money. Enough money to not live in Killbox, but not enough money to live in Sovereign's Watch, which is the nicer neighborhood in town. Sovereign's Watch is definitely going to have regular guard patrols passing by, so you don't want to look suspicious or like you're armed to the teeth. You don't want to walk around with a bunch of tech unless you want to be stopped and asked about it. And the restaurants are nicer. The shops are nicer. It's basically zero chance of a gang war breaking out, which, again, makes it superior to Killbox. Of course, so far since you guys have been to the city, you guys have started all the fights you've been in in Killbox. <laughs> You're more rambunctious than the worst part of town. Uh, That's not true. Daughter start one. Yeah, they 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 sick the guards on us. Yeah. 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 Um. Okay, so now I'm Kathy, your leader of the stealth crew. Who should go and who should not? Me, blackout, and Crocta. Okay. Do you want me to go as support crew or no? Not for first pass. This is just using information. Uh, okay. If, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. I'm only bringing Blackout because he kind of knows the area and kind of has an idea. And we got to see how good he does. And he's saying this right in front of, openly right in front of Blackout. Obviously, expressionless mask just staring back at you. <laughs> okay. This guy has all the charm and suave of a fucking clone trooper. Uh, Toby, C and Viz is only minute per level, correct? Yeah, it's short duration. Okay. Okay, I thought so. Yeah. Okay. Well, that case, really, the best I can give you without being alongside is a non-detect spell. Disguise uh, other for you, Disguise Josh, other. Last two hours. Per cast. Two hours per cast? Mm-hmm. Okay. So how I can give long, you this... How long would it take us to get into the Sovereign Watch area? At least in the area. By foot, walking, like half an hour. Okay. Yeah, go ahead and give me the not definitely the non-detection. That's going to be important for the next several days for everybody. And go ahead and give me the, the, the this guy's other. Do like human kind of a, a laborer, not 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 someone down here. Uh, kill box level dirty but you know delivery person or somebody coming to do a job or something like that you know you understand what i'm saying mm-hmm mm-hmm todd you need to disguise you good with your bug form sorry did you guys say something yeah um i'm you handing out spells <laughs> <laughs> yeah sorry i'm a little distracted it's fine. Uh, yeah, do you... Everybody went on a stealth mission, right? I'll just do the talk group. Okay. Yeah. Um, Blackout, would it benefit you f to have a disguise? Yeah. I. You know, better I don't be seen with a bunch of weirdos. <laughs> Humans are the weirdos. Wow. Okay, that's about all I can do without being with you. I mean, I could yeah. give you invis, but it's not going to last you very long. Yeah, exactly. You'd have to really bust ass to get anywhere. Yeah. Save your spell slots for now. Like I said, this is in and out, no fights, quick information, uh, quiet, and then I come back and we plan an assault kind of thing. Okay, how many of us are there? That's like two hours of non-detect, so... Right. There's your time limit. Let's go. We gotta move. Okay. Stealth core, roll out. You guys exit 
the secret safe house, slamming the door and waving to all the neighbors as you do. No, I assume you're quite <laughs> sneaky. Mm -hmm. Let's actually just have a stealth check as we exit the neighborhood. Because the safe house isn't much good if you're ever seen entering or leaving it. Super good stealth checks. Look at that. Stealth core. The low is the tiny cockroach person at 33 stealth. <laughs> fly out in like really cool like zigzags <laughs> <laughs> you fly out right past someone's head and they go god damn it and take a swat at you and then keep walking that it's is a good the thing they're not as good as blackout yeah nomcath you and blackout exit as are you guys disguised as like similar people so it makes sense that you're walking together or are you can walk yeah separate? probably okay and a couple of workmen yep you look like a little higher, a little higher class than you would see in um, the oh. kill box. So uh, you're, but... so you're like overpriced plumbers with your fancy gear headed to the nice part of town to greet <laughs> somebody for two hundred bucks an hour. Fucking, uh, more like five fifty an hour thing. Holy Hell fuck. yeah! Fuck no. <laughs> yes. No. What? God damn! I cannot afford to live where you work. Ah. They're 160 an hour here. That's bonkers. All right. Let's see. So, these incredibly high priced workmen head into. You cross the Street of Lights. Mm -hmm. Guards pay you no mind with your fancy disguises and your tiny roach flying around near, near you. You guys cross several city blocks, passing a number of shops and supply places, you pass a couple of neighborhoods. Look like nicer apartments, even a few single standing houses. As you get into Sovereign's Watch, you've walked for maybe 15 or 20 minutes and you've seen two guard patrols that included at least, you know, five or six city lawmen walking together, talking to people, just obviously on a regular beat. And you enter into the heart of the nice part of town. What do we do here? Right, you said you got some idea, huh? Yeah, he's uh should be centrally located. He'll need to be somewhere with a lot of power, uh, and more tech than usual, obviously. All right, start looking. Well, actually, let me let me ask you this. So this is a kind of an un. This is like open secret kind of place, or just kind of not known secret like would it would it be useful to ask questions of the area uh, that's what i want to know i mean i don't think he's advertising yeah all right i just didn't know if it'd be useful to ask around and say hey, have you seen a whole bunch of robots heading in a certain direction or anything like that blackout can tell you that from the outside he's been on the sidelines of this for years the Technic League captains, the Technic League agents are all wizards, sorcerers, powerful spellcasters. And there's no trust or love between them, really. So usually when a Technic League captain steps down, it's because they were murdered by another person who wants to be a Technic League captain. So while Blackout suspects that the other captains know where the other captains live, they might know where Avernathy lives, they, Avernathy would also be ready for and expecting an attack at all times. They live in a constant state of paranoia. It's very Lannister's Game of Thrones. They're just ready for anything at all times. Except for that time Tywin was sitting on the toilet. <laughs> and his son shot him. Yeah, I was more along the lines of just trying to see if, if we could speed things up by asking certain kinds of questions of people. Um, but if it's if it's kind of if it's kind of not open, then probably we would probably draw more suspicion asking the questions than we'd get for uh, trying to uh, uh, <clears throat> find anything. So I guess all we can really do is just kind of head in the area and look around, and keep eyes and ears open, see if we see anything. Okay. Give me a general knowledge local check from those of you that buy it. 
Croctaw, you can give me a perception check. Actually, Croctaw, give me a spellcraft check, too. Pretty good. Knowledge locals in the 30s. Croctaw with a garbage perception, but big bonus and even worse spellcraft. Croctaw, you can't imagine how anybody lives in this city. Powerful spells or not. There's not a not enough magic or clean air or there's not enough gust of wind castings in the world to make this place smell anything less like hell. So you're kind of taken with that sensation. Nomcath and Blackout. The houses of the people you're looking for could really be anywhere in this neighborhood. You would really need a way to isolate them or search for them very specifically. Like Crastus, you know he's a necromancer, so probably his house, you would assume, yeah. has has undead in it, maybe. Or wherever he builds them or something like that. So his facility, wherever he is, is probably a more elaborate facility. Uh, yeah. Abernathy likes robots. He probably has a lot of robots in his house protecting him. Yeah. I really don't want to give this away just yet. But we need this. All right. Um, I got something I'm going to try. Give me a minute. And we, we kind of find a, a corner that we can, you know, pause and look like we're messing with stuff without causing too much attention. And I open up the backpack and I uh, grab uh, uh, Cassandra Lee's tablet. I keep, I keep it in the backpack so it's not showing it to everybody, but... Right. Uh, all right. Um, yeah, I... I hey. Oh, this is awkward. <laughs> Could you, do you sense any, uh, can you, can you get a pickup on any, uh, concentration of robots in the area? You're talking your into your backpack. Yeah. Hmm. I'm trying to look. Perception check and Nomcath sleight of hand. At first, well, yes. Yeah. Blackout, first you think he's maybe whispering into a communicator, which you start to worry about because, you know, the technically could be listening. You worry that maybe he's not, you know, th these guys are from out of town. They're from fucking scrap ball. They're like hillbillies. So they probably haven't set the encryption. They haven't set a secret channel. Like, uh, so you worry about him using a radio right next to you, frankly. But he's talking to something in his backpack. It's not a communicator. He's not pressing a walkie-talkie button or anything. It's just like talking to his backpack like it's a person. Yeah, now he's starting to wonder if there's a, like a half lean or something in there. <laughs> Backpack's not that big. It's a very nice backpack. <laughs> it's a masterwork backpack, but <laughs> it ain't big enough for a half lean. <laughs> Who the hell you got in there, buddy? Uh... Let's just say it's a contact who can help with some tech stuff, okay? And let's leave it at that, because, you know, I'm not asking you to take your mask off. You know, let's earn some trust between each other. Eh, fair enough. Okay. You whisper what to her? Can she find any concentrations of robots in the area? Since she said she could pick him up before. You see the screen come on extremely dimly. You can barely see her face. It's like she's in a dark room. And you see these sort of glinting green eyes look up at you calmly and say, There are 74 robots in my scan range. But what about a cluster of them that are within, say, half a mile of us? She sort of blinks at you for a second and says, there is a concentration of 
active robotic entities to the east. Seven blocks east. East, northeast. Cool. Thanks. And he uh, <laughs> closes it. All right, I I've got a direction. Let's go about seven blocks that way. Okay. That's close to where we were pinged. Mm-hmm. Uh, you guys get here, and I would like some fresh stealth and perception checks from the whole stealth core team. There it Ooh, is. Wow. <laughs> oh, Jesus, really? Wow. Oh, man. A one in 400 chance of back to back ones. Holy shit. Is that on stealth or perception? Both. Both. From me. Oh. I'll put it <laughs> to this way. Out of all the rolls we just did, the highest roll, not total, but roll, was 12. <laughs> Ooh. And that was on, and out of all of them, that was the only one that was double digits. The next one, next highest one is a six. <laughs> you search these neighborhoods and... With these garbage checks, you're only able to isolate it to, let's see, about this big of an area. Many, like, <laughs> maybe two, two and a half city blocks. So you've isolated it to maybe 20 houses. Ah. <sighs> many damn patrols we can't get take the time to really look i mean i could get closer take a look through some of the windows maybe these are largely this whole neighborhood is independent houses there's no apartment complexes there's no townhouses or anything like that they're all freestanding homes some of them have walls some of them don't some of them are you know they're None of them really have yards, per se. It's pretty tough to have a yard in Numeria, but they're, the streets are regularly patrolled by people, like goods coming and going, and, of course, the guards. Yeah. So, should I go house-to-house looking through windows? Uh, you think you can do it without being caught? That would be fairly suspicious. Oh, if you're going to... send out. That would help. Oh, yeah. I, I could send out insect spies too. If minutes per level. Okay. Oh, 13 minutes. Do you guys want to, like, divide up the houses you want to search? You know, Shaggy, yeah. you take Scoob sure. and. I think okay. so, yeah. Okay. Nomcath, with your dual ones, you're going to kind of sit this one out. <laughs> yeah. Uh... <laughs> That's fine. You're really disoriented. He's kind of gotten turned around, and this part of the city is so foreign to him. He's honestly never been in a place like this. It's so clean, mm -hmm. so ordered. It's bizarre. And Crocta, insect spies. You can borrow the yeah. senses of your insect spies, uh, beetles, and you crawl through the whole area. You guys divide up the houses. I will give you, depending on which you're better at, Either survival or perception checks. Blackout and Crocta. Choose the better skill. Thirty-four perception from Crocta. He said survival or perception. Okay. Yeah, whichever you prefer. Oh, are you kidding me? Nice, natural one. Wow. You guys uh you're still having trouble. Croctaw eliminated a few houses, so you're down to this area. You've shrunk it a little bit, but there's still like 10, 12 houses. You're not sure which one it could be. Blackout did not have much luck. Every time he walked up to a house, it was just uncanny. The gardener came out. A delivery happened. Some kids ran out. Uh, guards walked by. He just could not ever get a clean look in several of these houses. You guys are bad luck. 
I never have this kind of difficulty when I'm on my own. Yeah, that's what they all say. I at least admit my own failings. <laughs> oh yeah, you're right now, Kev. There probably are a lot of like gravel yards, Japanese sand <laughs> yeah. gardens and shit. Or just, just dirt. <laughs> just Phoenix. You just Phoenix, yeah. Arizona style landscaping. You exactly. Do I mean, that's nicer than the ones I was thinking in my in thinking yeah. in my head. I couldn't find I couldn't find the picture of just you know dirt there, yard. <laughs> there wouldn't be this much green, but yeah, the color scheme's right, the yard's right, the sidewalk is that orderly. Like it's well, I picture I picture the green of that one section, not the other house over. You know, just a yeah. couple of little little plants. And Crocta, the air here is less foul. They don't seem to be setting any garbage on fire within 10 city blocks of this area. So you guys are sort of stymied here by the manual search. What do you want to try? While, okay, while they're out, I would I would consult Consadon Lee again. It's like, if we get close enough, can you tell us which house that thing is? Or, I mean, how specific is your, your ability to sense? You talk to her while they are searching, and she says, the, the concentration is close. There is a domicile with... Fourteen, fifteen robots. If you, if I get close, can you like buzz as I get as I walk past it? Yeah, she does a tiny little pulse, like a cell phone vibrate ring. <laughs> exactly, and she does it in very slightly increasing frequency if you are going the right direction, and she slows it down if you go the wrong direction. So you guys play a little warmer, colder. As you wander right. around the neighborhood. Now, yeah, so, yeah, as once, you wander you back and forth, yeah. mm -hmm. acting a little strange, give me a yeah. bluff check or disguise, whichever Nomcath's better at, to act natural and, and talk to people who are like, are you lost? Double check. I'm pretty sure my bluff is better, but let me Probably double check bluff, before yeah. I roll. Uh, plus 20 versus uh, plus That's 7. Big. Yeah. <laughs> big, big, big. Don't roll a one. There's no way you can I'm go three ones in a row. That would be. I'm taking ten. <laughs> astronomical. Oh wow. This, 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 this is an ex, this is an extended thing. Wow. We got a little bit of time still. Okay. I'm taking ten. Okay. Okay. That is a I'm luxury. I'm not pushing you... my luck. Okay. Fair enough. That gives you a total of thirty. A couple people, you bluff your way out of a couple conversations who are like, "Are you lost?" It's like you fucking plumbers charge while you're wandering around lots looking for the house. I don't, you know, I don't make the rules on the charging. I just tell them what time I left and what time I get back. Yeah, whatever. Five hundred an hour, buddy. You probably live in a bigger house than these, this neighborhood. You, uh, I got eight kids listen. to feed. Well, I got a cocaine habit. I got a oh, that's what it is. See, <laughs> here I thought we were slanderizing the plumbers, but in, in comes Tracy with the real reason. <laughs> I think it's the restaurant owners who have the cocaine habits, typically. That's fair. Yeah. Okay. Restaurant workers. Yeah. Okay, so between the insect spies and the wandering around check peeking in windows and the using the ultra-illegal artifact, Stealth Core manages to isolate the house that has 15 robots in it. All right. So we're running out of time. Quick rundown. What's the area look like? Air avenues of approach. High uh, points. Yeah. <laughs> Where I can shoot from. This house is in a very busy square. It is a stone house that basically has streets on every side it has no yard per se and 
it is just flanked on each side by by thick stone walls you think maybe over a foot thick it's kind of like a little fort but it's very beautiful it's a lot of uh, wood trim or this sort of strange material that they use magic to sort of turn adobe and mud things into a wood-like surface and wood-like texture but it's actually earth and it's a really beautiful well-made home right here in the center of the neighborhood I'll bring you guys over only stealth core is actually here of course the rest of you are not really present But the house is uh, here. You see it has a patio on the north side that looks like it's rarely ever used. This area here. It looks sort of dusty and untouched. In fact, why don't we... Looks like we could possibly make a second floor entry. <laughs> like out saying this as he's walking with Nomcath, assessing the place. Yeah, not everybody's good at doing that quietly, though. You can make a perception roll as you guys case the joint. Pretty good, pretty good. Yeah, through several windows... It's pretty obvious just standing there is a figure inside the window. And at first you think, oh, fuck, I don't want to be spotted. And then you realize it's a gearsman just standing inside the window. It's not facing directly towards the window. It sort of has its back to one of the interior walls. And you see several of them while you're peeking in the windows around the house. Are there any uh, businesses around the perimeter of this house? Restaurants, cafes, that kind of thing. There are many things in this area. Looks like we have a sort of shipping depot to the southeast. It looks like you have a like a restaurant supply facility to the to the east side. Namcath, the room you are outside now, you take particular care not to show yourself to because the windows are reflective. They look like mirrors from the outside, but you suspect that from the inside, you can see out just fine. A lot of ground to cover. Honestly, it's not going to be quiet. We're going to have to fight our way through. So my uh, source says there's 15 robots. Uh, might be able to query them later and get more specifics on the types. I didn't want to do that out here in the open. Uh, so, like I said, it's going to be noisy no matter what we do. We might uh, just come here at night and rush the place. I don't see a way, way of doing this quietly. I'm sorry, you said not to ask, but your source, is it like one of the other captains? Should no. I know about something? No, you, you, won't, you won't know them, I promise you. I don't know, I know a lot of people. Mm. Jeez, they've been around for a very long time and have a lot of useful information about a lot of different things. But uh, believe me... They are very much against uh, what the technical represents and who they work with. Right. Well. All right. No, I don't know I... your source. Maybe in time we can uh, make introductions. Exactly. Let's earn some trust. Right. I still say the second floor entry is our best hope. Well, here's the thing. You and me... Crocta, yes. Uh, Olbrin, probably the, he'll he'll use his little movement thing to get up there without a problem. Ulfred, 
that means climbing or him using his rocket boots, and that's <laughs> going to be noisy either way. <laughs> I was totally thinking the rocket boots. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> All right, the subtlety of Tony Stark. If that's the case, we'll send him in first. He's the battering ram, you know? <laughs> Aim for the window, hits the wall, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Can't Holbrin take somebody with him when he travels? I think it costs him extra, but yeah. Yeah, it he does cost me double. 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 Now, of course, casting any kind of spell outside this place might set off alarms as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And Oberyn's method is definitely magical. This is a wizard's house. And Blackout knows what that means. Right. Uh, going in the old-fashioned way might be the best way. Every, yeah. every door and window you should expect to be alarmed and trapped. Because it's not just, actually, it's not just a wizard's house. It's a technically wizard's house. Technically, wizards got where they are by being really paranoid. Let me double check something real quick. What do I have? I can't remember. I think I used up my last pipe bomb. Just throw a pipe bomb in there for the best. <laughs> Throw it right through the window. This is when we need uh, McGinnis with his rocket or his uh, grenade launcher. Grenade launcher. Oh my <laughs> god, that would be awesome! And then just like <laughs> shoot them as they run out. Uh, well, I'll just keep thinking... a low profile. <laughs> right, low profile. Well, there's, there's just not a, this going. It's going to be a fight. Period. We have to assume all those robots are going to end up being against us. It's going to be noisy no matter what we do. So the best we can do is try and make it as short as possible. So that means hitting them hard, hitting them fast, and tearing through the place. And, getting, and getting out before anybody else investigates. It's possible that if we get inside and get the door closed behind us that uh, we're not going to be... Really, as noticed on the outside. Thick walls. Stone. That'll true. muffle the sound. Ah, true. And I forgot, we don't have Takala and his screaming sword anymore. <laughs> Alright. Ulfred says, I'm a dwarf. I always have a low profile. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Ulfred. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, hey, I successfully used that against the GM once. <laughs> Set off a trap and say, hey, these, these were built by humans, right? Well, I'm a dwarf. Yeah. Spear traps. Spear Indiana traps Jones and the, the chest. Last Crusade, where the <laughs> razor blade goes right above his head. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Clang. That would have killed a taller man. <laughs> All right, so. Let's get back and see if the others have any ideas about infiltration. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, Stealth Corps leaves the area. And returns safely to the safe house. Where is the safe house? Here we go. It's right where you left it. That's right. Safely. All right. We found the place. Uh, suspect uh, 15 or so robots inside. Functional. Active at the time. Robots inside. <clears throat> uh, don't know about anybody else. Uh, it's a fairly large house, probably about the size of the size of our place. The size of our place back in Torch. Whoa, that nice. I said the size. <laughs> Opulence. Mm -hmm. Uh. Do they have a uh, bath? <laughs> I didn't go peeking into the, into that far. Here's the thing: it's in the middle of it's in the middle of a populated area. It's got thick walls, but it's a it's a wizard's house. It's a technically house. We have to assume it's trapped in alarm to hell. Honestly, I can't think of a way to do this as a stealth mission. Well, we got ways. 
Um, uh, blackout. Yeah. Can you do you have a way to successfully and quickly get wands? Depends on. Well, for one, how powerful of a wand are we looking for? Well, if we're looking at stealth, if used properly, silence could be helpful. It's a dangerous wand in a city like this. Well, it's still magic, so maybe easier to get. Um, fly might be good. Still have a few charges of airwalk. Airwalk, yeah. What do you think of fly for infiltration? Toby, how many uh, charges do I have have on my wand of fly? Your wand of fly, Ulrin. Let's see. There's so much shit in your inventory, I have to filter for things. Nine out of fifty. So I've got nine charges of fly. That could be helpful. I got six charges of airwalk. Okay. I can do gaseous form. Okay, I've got to scroll that too if it helps. Um, I can give myself wings too. That's subtle. You can? That's uh, so yeah. It. Was it, uh, something or other form? Mm -hmm. Do I think gaseous form would set off an alarm spell? Likely an alarm spell would be a being would have to pass through a space or open a door or window would trigger it. If you could find a crack small enough to seep through and go slow enough, like it would take you a long time to seep through a tiny crack, but if you did that, it would, would not necessarily set it off. Well, it would windlock all of us then, right? If we wanted to do a gas one. Mm hmm. That's true, I didn't think about that, although again, it'd be. I need a rest. I didn't prepare that many. Yeah. So. Well, I, was, I was thinking about doing it at night anyway, so. Cassandra, what were the types of robots you sensed? Can you. She's uh, hidden at the moment. Yes. <laughs> oh, damn it. I keep forgetting but that shit. You blew it. I. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Blackout, you memory. just noticed the sorcerer trying to talk to Nomcat's backpack and then stopped himself. I start signing. Could Cassandra Lee figure out what, what kind of robots Boy, were the there? CIA, we are not. <laughs> Sign back, I was going to ask her later. <laughs> so is it a fairy? Is it... <laughs> it's a companion who we have helped out and they've helped us out. Was it a halfling that uh, had reduced cast on it? No magic is involved. I'll keep trying. Don't worry about it. Tell you what. Doesn't I bet you, ten, you. I, I bet you ten platinum you can't guess it. <laughs> he thinks about it for a minute, and uh, he says, well, if I had ten platinum, I might make that bet. Oh, shit, I didn't give you any money. I'll take an IOU. All right. If I take 10 platinum off of one of these uh, technically captains, I'll pay you back if I lose. <laughs> that also means no peeking in the backpack, then. Right. But if I guess right, you have to tell me. I honor my word. Deal. He spits on his hand and offers it. There, I fixed your money on blackout there, Tracy. Sorry, I forgot about that. Okay. Um, you have a bank account. There's a bank in Sovereign's Watch where you have a bank account, and that's where your weightless currency is stored. Boy, that sucks, because I know as soon as I'm revealed, that's all gone. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> better, better make a run on the bank. Time for a withdrawal. Yeah, and then he's just walking out with bags of gold. That's not suspicious. Well, you could have it under some <laughs> other name, you know. Yeah. You didn't necessarily walk in there with your helmet on and go, I'm blackout. I'd like a checking account. <laughs> That's very fair. Uh, 
I yeah. better get the damn toaster. Without the helmet on, nobody knows who he is. Mm -hmm. Takes off his armor, he's just wearing a plumber's outfit. <laughs> the ultimate disguise. We go the red overalls there. or the green ones? Mm, I'll leave that to him. The yellow ones. I'm a wadio. Purple. <laughs> 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 Uh, I'm gonna go to me. Toby, I know I've asked this before. What hmm? does a scroll of technomancy do? Jack and shit. I was gonna say it probably. Detect ain't magic, but it detects the presence of technological objects instead of magical objects. Grants you the feat for attempting knowledge engineering checks to identify technology. And if you already possess a feat, this gives you plus ten on knowledge engineering checks to identify items. Okay, so I got I got some stuff that might help us identify what's going on with the with the robots. Yeah, those scrolls could be used. Like, say for example, you're at a window and you're trying to think, trying to figure out if it's trapped or not. Nomcath can look because he has the rogue ability to detect magic traps. You could also detect magic on that window. If there's a magical mm -hmm. snare or trap or lightning bolt, whatever, you could detect that. You can get the type of aura, the severity. So if it's like one out of 10, then, oh, he's probably put an alarm spell on this window. If it's like six out of 10, he might've put a lightning bolt on it. If it's 10 out of 10, don't open that fucking window. <laughs> and then the same goes for technomancy. If you cast technomancy on a window and he has an actual electronic security system, if he has like simply say for a camera or a, a wire alert or a fucking claymore mine set to go off, it would potentially detect those. So I I could cast that on Nomcat and he'd give him a plus. Nah, you you'd have to cast the scroll when you're on the spot and you wanted the detect tech effect, right then. But it would only it only apply to me. I couldn't cast it mm -hmm. on somebody else. Okay. Well, Nomcat could try use magic device. It's not a very powerful scroll. We've seen my luck with that so far. Yeah, you're pretty <laughs> bad at it, but you never know. If it's the sort of thing you could take ten on. It's a level one spell. Yeah. I'm okay at UMD. Oh yeah. Cool. But I've got the I've got the tech skill. Oh yeah. Blackout is super good at UMD and knowledge engineering himself. Yeah, okay. You do notice that he carries I don't think you can hide this blackout, he carries a a rifle, a rather sophisticated looking rifle. Yeah, but Tokala carried a rather sophisticated chainsaw. <laughs> eh, sophisticated, it looks sort of like <laughs> demented. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess I'll have to put my uh, gun in a bag as we, you know, when we go there. Uh, I've got a bag of holding. Ah, perfect. I was just going to put it in, like, a gym bag, but, yeah, that's better. <laughs> What's in there? I got, a gu I got a guitar case you can borrow. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, hear me out, guys. We dress as mariachis. Poor. Oh. <laughs> Disguised as a bunch of bards. Yep. The maracas are actually Nomcast daggers. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing could possibly go wrong with this plan. Okay, so we're thinking second floor entry. Can do do we think? Do we think uh, Silent Wand is worth it? Silence is always worth it when we're trying to do this, and the only person who wouldn't be able to communicate would be Blackout. Well, it would affect you too, correct, Alfred? Star, what's that? Silent spell would affect you. Or, yeah, silent spell oh, would yeah, affect you. Spells, yeah, yeah. That, you guys wouldn't be able to do spells. Yeah, I can do spells. spells. If I spend higher slots, I can do spells that way. Yeah. But That's one out of three of us, though. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm, gonna... I'm just thinking, uh, how long did your contact say we had uh, Blackout that she could buy us time? 
Oh no, she just said that uh, Hearsick would be in contact within about three days. Okay. Blackout, your theory on what she meant by buy you time is that the shade was potentially the worst position politically of the technically captains. She was not really liked by anybody. She wasn't particularly best friends with anybody. And she wasn't the most powerful caster in the group. She had access to a lot of tech. She bought and sold a lot of expensive things. And so she was known to be resourceful in that respect. But you suspect that what your patron is thinking about doing is just kind of downplaying this as, oh, well, it, the, the Shade had a deal go sideways and got killed. Too bad for her. Uh, trying to... She will probably try to make sure that nobody immediately suspects that a death squad has appeared to murder the entire technically. That's true. She did come back hairless with glowing eyes and strange armored skin. Huh? The shade. And the shade. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah gotcha. Yeah, yeah. The shade was a strange critter. Sorry. Sorry, I forgot about that. Yeah. Yep. So, keeping that in mind, Alfred and Namkath, what do you think we... Is it possible for us to... If we're going to do this, take this robot crazy man out, that we can disguise it as like, hey, his his tech went nuts and fucked some shit up. I mean, it's always possible. Depends on... I mean... Depends on how much time we have to set stuff up. I mean, I intended the the last edition to end up just looking like a deal gone wrong or a, a, another uh, technically person got involved, but that you know completely went completely went south. Who would be the first suspected enemy of this guy? Blackout. Yeah, who who would be a political uh, antagonist? Give me a knowledge local check for that. Pretty good, 24. Avernathy is not closely allied to Osman. Not closely allied to anybody that you've worked with blackout Avernathy is fairly close with Akradin, the uh some people call him the knight and fairly gets along well with elias the old man so he has those two sort of friendships but he's known to be sort of the robotics expert he was sort of often opposed by Sila, but she's been missing for months. Like the two of them fought over things from what you understand. And then uh, also Avernethy probably gets away with having, having a few enemies because he was the primary mechanic repairer and rebuilder of gearsmen throughout the city. He, he loves robots and understands robots as well as just about anybody. And he and Crastus have had numerous arguments over the years about how best to defend the city. Crastus wanting something new, different, hybrid between magic and technology, and Avernathy just feeling that the Gearsmen and the Barbarians were sufficient. Right. Uh, do any of you know uh, necromancy, perhaps? <laughs> No, well, no, not my specialty. Holbrun's been meaning to tell you guys something. That's, uh, you know, that's too bad. Crassus would be the ideal candidate to uh, frame for this. At this point, it's probably best to just uh, uh, try and make it look like his creations uh, went rogue. Um, I'll give a wisdom check to anyone who was at the battle for Scrapwall. I'm not a high whisk character, so probably better not. Just try it. <laughs> Hell yeah. 
Oh, damn. Ulfred, natural one. Wow. Ulfred, you were there. You want me to hit this for you? I don't know if I have a macro for that. Eight. I got a 19. <laughs> Nomcath, they're a long way off, but you know where somewhere in the neighborhood of 15 to 20 undead robots are buried in Scrapple because you all buried them. If you wanted undead, that's that's Nomcath's greatest. As he thinks yeah. back through his whole life, that is the most undead he's ever encountered. And you hear that there's a lot more things buried and discarded in Scrapple since the second battle for Scrapple happened, which you guys have heard about but not seen yourselves. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Those uh, uh, undead robot things we fought. Like, uh, like I remember I said that uh, the other guy got the 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 the, the, uh, the stuff that we left behind that was building them. Yeah. There was like 15 or so of those ones that we killed, plus the ones that didn't wake up. If we wanted to take the time, we could go to Scrapple, grab those. I don't know how many we could stuff in our bag of holding. <laughs> we got two of them. And, you know, plant those. I mean, that's necro necrotic. Plus, we know somebody... One of the one of the captains brought the stuff that's related to that, so he's probably gonna start having some of them showing around. Scrap walls a hell of a long ways to go from here. It depends on how you do it. But Crast has recently brought back many, many wagon loads of unknown materials from Scrap Wall. And we uh, we know that it was some of it was the stuff from that lab. Marrow's experiments. Mar yeah, Marrow's experiments. She called them Rust Risen. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt. Uh, could I have some stuff going on. Would it be alright if I dropped out early? Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, just need sure. to do, man. We might finish uh, a little early since we're short people, but don't worry about it. Yeah, I mean, I'd, it'd be awesome if you guys continue or whatever, but I've been kind of distracted and I, I can't really. It's totally you know, fine. Enrique, no worries, buddy. Yeah. We'll catch you next Thanks. time. Thanks. I'll see you guys next week. Mm -hmm. See you, man. Bye. We'll do a little more setup. Any anything, any other setup stuff you guys want to do, and then maybe next time, you guys can try to go kill something, whatever it is. So, how are you thinking about using this Numcath to our advantage? Just planting them after the fact. You know, in, in the carnage afterwards, leave the bodies around. Like, just further ex evidence, like he was messing with some weird shit and it kept going wrong. Or somebody use these necrotic. Oh, because the necrom. Oh, okay. Sorry, I'm a little dumb on that. I'm following. Well, uh, I mean, you, you don't deal with necromancy, so I mean, it's true. I don't. Through, you, know, you, just, you just forget it because it's just a nasty thing to think about. Mm-hmm. 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 Problem is, again, we'd be basically limited on how many we can carry, and we got the two bags of holding, sure, but they're. Uh, you know, how many of them could we fit? Would it make sense? Uh, do we uh, do we keep them whole? Do we just leave? You know, do we just take parts? Because then we can scatter. You know, we could take more parts and just scatter them around. Mm -hmm. And Did make guys, maybe look like there were more. You guys shared with Blackout that you suspect, or you pretty sure you know what Crest has brought back from Scrapwell. Uh, no, we haven't showed. Well, the closest we've shared is me mentioning it there in a kind in a kind of you know, in joke sort of way, so to speak. You know. Okay. With Blackout's various knowledge local checks, Blackout can tell you that recently Crassus came back from the south. Some people said he'd been to a place called Scrapwall, but nobody in this town knows really much about it. And he came back with a bunch of gearsmen pulling wagon loads of something that was very well covered up with tarps. And don't know, Blackout, you don't know where that stuff ended up, but given that he had, you know, so many workers and laborers, like, pulling and moving the wagons through the city, there's got to be a couple dozen people who generally know where that stuff went. 
and thus might know the neighborhood where Crassus' uh, workshop is. Just to add more complication to this. Hell yeah. Set up a dual raid. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> this is an insurrection, man. You guys are gonna, you know. You're like SEAL Team 6, go in there and destabilize the city. Well, I mean, we de literally destabilized the foundations of yeah, part of the city. I, yeah, <laughs> seismically. Like, you're, you guys are about a three and a half on the Richter scale so far already. <laughs> The question is, is it worth it to take that side trip? it take, what, about a day to get there and get back? Going Croctaw's route? I mean, it's worth it for me. Keeps me, uh, less in the open. Yeah. Alright. Then GM question. Yep. Consider the fact we are also using the bags of holding to hold the more conspicuous but easily uh, put onable tech mm -hmm. when we're getting ready to go do raids. Mm -hmm. um, how many of those uh, rust risen or significant portions of them do I think we could stuff in the bags of holding? What's the weight limit on your bags of holding? Uh, I think 500 pounds. A rust risen was, when it was alive, a 200 pound man, but stripped down to skeletal and minimal musculature. So 140, maybe 50 pounds of metal. You could probably fit two, maybe three in there. If there was nothing else in there. No, 250, excuse me. Then you could probably fit two at most. So, so two in each, so we'd only have four. It's not a lot. Well, if you just get some scrolls of Animate Dead, kill some people, animate them, turn them loose on the scene. That's what the Hell's Vengeance Party would do. True. <laughs> they have an actual necromancer. This is much more convenient. Yeah. But again, even if we just get those four, we can kind of break them up and leave them in, in pieces to imply there were more. Blackout... I see Tracy saying I really want to frame him. From Blackout's perspective, you can you can imagine that if a second Technic League captain is killed, they will go on alert and assume they are under attack. If yeah. it looks like they were killed by another Technic League captain, they will assume there's some sort of internal coup and they won't assume they won't assume that they're under attack from outside. They'll assume they're under attack from within. The response will be very different. They'll all yeah. kind of retreat into their silos. They won't talk to each other as much. If they think they're under attack from outside of Starfall, they will band together and become one one force. Much harder can't. to kill. Yeah, we can't we can't. Yeah. That. Seven right. seven wizards together is Un That's a unimaginable lot. Yeah, That's a difficulty lot. and seven wizards who don't trust each other is much easier to fight alright then I think we do a side trip to scrap wall then get some stuff and hopefully it's enough to uh, convince them that it was a, a big enough force to make this kind of attack assigned to Namkath we've also got the I can't remember the name of it. our our big big car thing we could haul stuff reasonably close and then move it in closer from there it still carry weight from to uh, to uh, to the house yeah but it it's closer it's not a it wouldn't uh, we can make uh, more only, trips because it'd be closer so I'm, I'm I only saying. want to do one trip it's in and out and done the more the more times we go back the more likely we get caught okay Plus, you know how subtle that car is. <laughs> and it would take longer than a day for us to get there. It's a scrap wall. All right. Uh, side trip to scrap wall, then. Okay. We'll plan for it in the morning when uh, Croctaw can uh, uh, prepare the spell. 
Okay, so the party is going to rest. Are these the watches? Yep. Okay. Well, actually, uh, hold on a sec. We're... Well, yeah, that's that's watches because uh, Olbrin's going to be awake that time. Oh, well, actually, no, that's, that's not, actually, that's not right. Uh, we need to even that out a little bit more. Because really, Olbrin's going to, or not, uh, yeah, Olbrin's going to be awake for half of first watch as well. Mm-hmm. Um... Blackout, will you take a uh, second watch? Yeah, and you know what? I'll uh, I'm gonna put up some alarm too. All right. Cool. Technological yeah. or magical? Uh, from my lookout band, selective alarm. Nice. I think I created that item from scratch and forgot exactly what it does. So enjoy that. Oh. Oh, yeah. I didn't have a pipe bomb, but I've got a block of Silex. <laughs> we can still blow our way through the wall. I have some pipe bombs. Oh, yeah. It's a really specific version of the alarm spell. Yeah. So I'll exclude us. <laughs> that's something he's, yeah, that's something he scooped up many, many jobs ago. And it's helped him to, it's defended him, protected him safely from uh, competitors' assassination attempts multiple times. Okay, so you got an alarm spell. The evening will pass pretty peacefully since you guys were so a sneaky. Everyone should be rested. Any more prep you guys want to do before we like pause it for the next session? Since we're missing two people now. No, not really. I said the plan is uh, the plan is good. But the only thing I can think of is if you want if you want to speed stuff up, if you have nothing planned to happen at Scrap Ball or anything that we that you think we would need be interested to in finding out about what's going on, we could kind of hand wave that over a little bit if you just want to speed things up. The scrap wall trip? Yeah, going to scrap yeah. wall, finding the stuff. Or, yeah, and... logistically I think we would just have to figure out how many spells in a given day yeah. you would need because you have to travel about 200 miles at 60 miles an hour <laughs> yeah so you're there in a little over three hours yeah then you dig up you search for bodies that you buried a year ago in the desert in a mm -hmm. pile of junk. Oh, I remember it perfectly. Yeah, I'm sure you do. So then that's going to take however much time it takes. And while you're doing it, you're going to want to evade the technically contingent that is left there. Spoiler alert, yeah. there are some still there. Uh, yeah. So it'll be a pretty quick thing. Um, who all is going on that trip? I figure we take the whole party. Okay, because Crap Toss. We, yeah, we, we kind of we kind of get out, need to get out of the city for a bit anyway. So okay. Yeah, I know it'll take two spells to do it because it took us it took two spells to move the whole party last time. Okay. So it's yeah, and I be, think. Go ahead. I was going to say, it's going to be, we're going to be there and we're going to be there all day. And the next morning we're going to come back and then we probably won't make the plan, the assault until the, the third day. All right. Yeah. And we'll need to consult our source about yeah. some things about the uh, robots. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's possibly worth getting some dispel ones and maybe silent silence because that i think will help us in the long run i mean it's a good idea but i don't know how how we are on funds overall i don't know either but it's worth looking into i mean even if i can put a silent spell on uh blackout that way his gun doesn't you know blast the doors off of everything yeah i think that's worth the effort well he did i make, mean he did, he did make a point about it uh the thick stone walls that will muffle stuff 
Yeah, but if we go in there blowing shit up and beating stuff with hammers, it's gonna get noticed. Also, yeah. you'll you'll notice that his uh that his gun does have something on the end of it. The I mean, you 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 have tech stuff. It looks like a silencer. What's a silencer? <laughs> Does it work has like any, a silence spell? Has anybody in no. the party used a silencer? Your <laughs> gun, your gun has a built-in suppressor. Oh, well, that's true. I do. That's true. My, my I forgot. Yeah. My, and the little my, pistol my you rifle. took from your catfold buddy. Yeah. Distant cousin. Which we got rid of. <laughs> so its gun's not not as loud as it has to be. Yeah. It's audible within a couple hundred feet, but not beyond that. And even yeah. at that range, it sounds like a thunk. If you're right next to it, it still sounds pretty much like a gun, but... <laughs> okay, Ulfred, uh a question for you, a tactical question. So, say we buff up and get all badass E. How is it? How likely is it that you'll need to use a lot of attack spells in combat? Attack spells as in, like... Like blowing yourself up with fire. Damage. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. AoE shit. Um... Hopefully I wouldn't have to resort to that. Just use my hammer. So that I was thinking. And you can you can do that without in silence. So So if we do this properly, we can use Crocta silence to our advantage. Crocta, yeah, but the Crocta will be affected. Crocta's can... never around when we freaking buff shit. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm You're saying not he uses spells <laughs> in the middle of combat. He uses spells in the middle of combat, but he can also range out of the spells range yeah, a true. lot easier than some of us true he'll probably be in the cockroach form and just fly away yeah and i can be too and so that could be an advantage that's all i'm saying it yeah it, that's true if we think about this and have a plan rather than just going in blind and you know destroying a whole sewer system like we did last time we that was not our fault <laughs> <laughs> is is there anything that blocks the spell? Like uh, some spells are blocked by lead. Which spell? Uh, you know some spells. <laughs> 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 I know as much about magic as uh, the next non-magic person. I mean, I mean some sort of anti-magic would probably dispel it, but just from general experience, um, these spells just don't. Is there a will save, maybe? What, what's the scenario you're imagining? I'm imagining like a uh, a lead box. You open one side, and the silence comes out that side. <laughs> oh no, silence! Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh It's tricky to place a silent spell without hitting your own people, isn't it, Tokala? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Why you put it on an object and throw it? <laughs> that yep. can, you can. That's one way to try and try and do it. Or just hand it to the rogue. <laughs> He's gonna be over on the other side, anyways, right? Yeah, I'm thinking we put it on a party member that it's not gonna affect as much, or an object, something like that. Yeah. Only problem is, you know. It, with the current composition, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be sticking to Ulfred because he's gonna be the only one. <laughs> I'm gonna be getting my freaking uh, bonuses. In yeah. With. Yeah. Oh shit. And, and... We, only got, we only have one real frontline person now, and then in the squishy rogue. I think there's two, <laughs> Luna and. Well, I, yeah, yeah I Luna. Luna. Mm -hmm. Okay, I forgot Luna. Yeah. And silence would affect Luna too. Yeah. A little. Less so. She gets a lot of her her cool stuff just by raging, which she can do in a silence, but uh, it would be harder for her to do her big self-healing stuff. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. her, her whole strategy is her armor class is not that great, and she gets hit a lot, but she heals every round. So you could hurt that aspect of her, her kind of fighting style. Yeah, I think we do some more. We see what resources we can get, and we talk to our source and see what the weaknesses of these robots may be, and then we can put together a greater picture of what we can and can't do and how how to make this look like an inside job. If there's 
this is another thing that Blackout can technically do for you guys. If there's anything you're trying to sell to fence quietly in the city or elsewhere, we could help you do it. You could also beam back to Torch and sell it there, but um, we do have we do have a ring of protection plus two, a cloak of protection plus two, and a necklace of, of, of natural armor plus two that we are be looking to fence and get some funds out of. Multiple spellcraft from Ulfred and Ulbrin. and I'll do one for Crocta here. She's not that great at it. She rolled okay. Alfred, you ain't know nothing. Look at that. You can identify a minus ninth level item with that skill check of six. Hell yeah. Uh, I apparently had a Ratful Scrapper roll spellcraft. Check that off. Or Olbrin did. Really? Hang on. There we go. There's your 25. The Arcane Family Workbook. You get a 27. Okay. Olbren, you could fairly, reasonably safely teleport to the safe house in Starfall. You could teleport to the slums where you spent the nights. This could later be traced or detected by the Technic League. Unless you set up a mage's private sanctum. Mm. And to make that worthwhile, we'd have to take the time to make it permanent mm -hmm. or something like that, which would cost, what, 12 grand? Yep. But if you found a spot you liked better, in fact, it wouldn't even have to be the safe house. You just find a spot mm -hmm. in the city that you feel is a good location to beam in and out of without being traced or tracked and you do it there you know it's in uh an abandoned building or it's in a sewer or it's in a it's in a slot bag it's in a, <laughs> oh my god yes slot I don't think to look in the slot bag specifically uh, the slot specifically bag is... the non specifically the non-working bathroom there oh we my go god <laughs> We all pile into the bathroom and okay. pile out of the bathroom. Okay, but Blackout can tell you that that bathroom's been broken for months and they haven't fixed it. <laughs> exactly! But we'll be in the sage major sanctum. We don't care. Yeah. Well, you want a spot that nobody goes and nobody will be standing in to get blown up or blow you up on teleportation. No, yeah, we'll outmass them. So we'll win no matter what. <laughs> well... <laughs> that's that's the sort of spot you'd want to pick. But if you guys spent the money on that, then you Numeria would be your oyster. You could just be like, we beam to Torch. We beam to, you know, Aldrinard's Grave, wherever. We beam to wherever we want to go. You could beam to Yadinve and stock up on Brow Brew, get some more soup, you know? Mm-hmm. Sure, they'd love to know that uh, uh, their suit bitch was a uh, former Technic League. Yeah. There are a lot of places in the sewer blackout. The the Scrap Wall Orcs, the Scrap Witches, have evaded the Technic League pretty effectively by tunneling around through the sewers, collapsing sewer tunnels. But the ones under the palace under sovereign's watch under the nice part of town are reinforced with stone and magic built intelligently with high tech tools and there are some really nice stout sewer passages that are large and empty no one passes through them or there's not they're not alarmed or anything no like they're that? essentially made for the like two times a year numeria is a desert so when it rains here, the land does not have a great ability to hold water or channel it anywhere. So flooding is an issue when it rarely ever rains here. But when it does, this city is sort of prepared for it. And there are like these huge, there's a couple of huge storm drains under the city that twice a year are filled with water. And the rest of the year, they're just, they sit empty. 
Okay, so that might be a good place. Blackout says TMNT, which of course means Teenage Mutant Ninja, Ninja, Ninja Turtles. Ninja Turtles. Mm -hmm. We can make it our home. <laughs> Okay, so we need to fence some stuff, see what kind of funds we can pull together. Can you build in like a car elevator in the sewer for the turtle truck to come and go? Yes, <laughs> it's all coming together, guys. Okay, any other prep before we close? No, I think that's it. I have uh, some items that we can give to Blackout to fence. Okay. If I can do a list. Blackout, do you have good gear? Like any of that stuff we're playing on fencing? Or do you do need it? No, I uh, I have my own equipment. Okay. You know, something I thought we could have done is pass some of that stuff off to the uh, scrap wall team. Could have helped them out. But, oh well. Fencing is much more useful at this point. Yeah, and you can fence to... Let's see. Let me put these shops out here for you guys. You can fence safely to Starfall Blades. If it's just magic items, if it's not tech, pretty easy to fence. Starfall Scrolls is available to you. Can we sell stuff in it? I think so. I hope so. Let's do this. Scrolls. Yeah, see if you can sell stuff, and this will be... Uh, and once, you know, Mockery is available. If Mockery or, since you have Blackout, you can access the Starfall under Underground Market. And it should be willing to buy stuff. It doesn't look like it. It just says the buy items. Okay, try Starfall Underground Under Market. I think I just enabled its yep. purchasing. Yep, there's the, there's the sell items tab. Okay. And they should give you the standard 50%. Where is it? I might have to reload. Under the under market, the barrel icon? Yeah, I didn't see it. I'll have to reload. Weird. Okay. They have black powder. Oh, yeah. You have your own supplier for ammunition in the city, though. Yeah, I'm just thinking we could just blow the house up. Oh, my God. So I subtle. Got, I, got, I got Silex. We don't need black powder. As long as we do a really cool scene of us all walking away from it as it's exploding. Yeah, Blackout, you actually have access to some of the coolest shops in the city. You know about a place called Warmageddon, which sells bizarre weapons. Really cool shit. And um, Firebeard Metals is a group of dwarves that sell pretty amazing shit. Uh, you may have passed through Montaigne. And been told not to touch anything. It's the high end, the premier magic item store in the desert city of Starfall. Our products are the perfect combination of form and function, offering premium quality and unparalleled style. They'll know when they see you or shoot you, you're wearing Montaigne. Chat GPT, wasn't it? Yep, you can tell. You can just tell, it's too perfect. Okay. Blackouts bought a pair of manacles. Can't imagine what those are for. Not that kind of GM. <laughs> well, well, when Tokala was chasing that last guy, he didn't have a way to really, yeah. you know, lock him mm -hmm. down. So I just thought, hey, that'd be good. Um... There, there's a scroll. There are scroll of silence available in uh, Starfall Scrolls. It's only 150 gold. Okay. What are ones? Like 300? No, it'll be third level spells, so it'll be more than that. You guys can also have access to Starfall Arcanery, 
which sells amulets, natural armor, up to plus four. You know, belt of strength, belt of dex, plus four. Bracers of armor, plus four. Cloak of resistance, up to plus five. And the headbands of charisma, wisdom, or intelligence, plus four. They are super expensive. Ring of protection, plus four. Thirty-two thousand dollars. Grand. Quite expensive. Jesus, I got to do something about this load. Carrying too much stuff. 200 pounds of gold. <laughs> Holy fuck, bud. Yeah, that is an issue. Well, I mean, put it in your bag of holding, right? Exactly. I mean, it's you know, 10,000 gold, so. That's a lot. I'll Get it changed into it. platinum. That's still going to be like 20 Silver pounds. Dicks. Yeah, it'll be a lot. <laughs> but that may actually at least take me under uh, <laughs> under my way. <laughs> Going from light load all the way into heavy load. <laughs> but let's see what that does. Okay, that puts me back down to light load, barely. <laughs> and then you know what? I can just put that in my bag of holding. So I'll put that in the wait list because I don't have any I don't have any money in in the bank so to speak. All right, uh, I guess we'll see you guys next week then. Will you? Oh, I'm not selling my hammer. <laughs> don't don't sell, sell my it. hammer. Alright, later guys. Alright, bye everybody. Guys.